Yo, what's happening guys? It's Clossius X. So in this video, part three, we're going to be making the player jump. Uh, and we're also going to be making the player lose health. So we're going to have like a little on-screen display, which will have like three hearts. And when you get hit, you'll lose a heart basically. So let's do that. So what I've done is I've already created the sprites. So I've basically duplicated the sprites that we use for left and right and just cleared the middle and put a J. So you need to do that. And then what I've done is I've created, these are basically just, I've drawn three tomatoes, which is supposed to be hearts and taken one off, saved it again as half health and then take another one off, saved it as one health. And then that's all you need is those three. So let's have a little look at creating these objects. So I'm going to delete um, the object there because we want to start again. Uh, yeah, so what I've done is I've just assigned uh, the object to jump. So we've got the jump button. So you've got the sprite jump, object jump. And then I've gone into the room and I've just placed it. Now the jump button is literally cosmetic. We don't have any anything assigned to it. There's no commands or anything like that. So what we want to do is create a new object and call this object object underscore um, virtual jump and then go to add event and create and in here just type in virtual key add now the reason that we're making a virtual key is because with Android if you're pressing left you can't press jump at the same time because you can only press one at one with virtual keys it'll literally let you press different keys at the same time without interrupting each other basically so we type x y um, and then the width of so 100 by 100 so x y is the location on the uh, screen so we want it to be wherever this object is and then you've got 100 100 for the size of the virtual key and then what we do is we do the key that it's replicating so we want it to replicate w capital W, make sure you put it as a caps and then put virtual key show um, and then what we want to do is just we want to assign these to jump equals and then the same here so virtual key show jump and then press ok and then save that Now you also want to click on draw GUI and we're basically just going to do the same again really so jump equals virtual key show and then put x y 100 100 you could have literally copy pasted this but I'm like a bit of the opposite of lazy just writing it out. I always write it out again for some reason. Right, so vir oh, that's virtual key show, it's virtual key add. You've got left, right, and jump. And what we need to do is we need to put the virtual key into the room. So we go to objects, object virtual jump, and then just put it about roughly around here. Because the virtual key always seems to be a little offset. So now if we press play, as you can see you've got this white box and this is basically where the virtual key will appear on your Android. Now that actually brings me to a very important, we need to set the GUI size otherwise it'll cock up with different resolutions. So if we go on here, it actually go into the create event and just type in draw set GUI size. Um, no, actually, it's it's uh, it's display display set GUI size. Uh, and then it was whatever the map size is. So our map is one hundred two four by four hundred. So we just go one hundred two four by four hundred. Now let's just test that. Yep, that's working fine. 
So now what we want to do is we want to set that virtual key to actually copy what we press on the character. So as you can see at the moment, it's basically whatever W does, then the virtual key will copy it. So we go into our hero, we click add a um, key press, where are we? A keyboard, that's it. And then type in, actually we want it to be a key press, we don't want it to be keyboard. And then letters, we press W. So press W key, control. So what we want to do is type if. So we want it to actually affect the player. So what we do is we type if touching equals one. And we need to set up touching. So if touching equals one, um, physics apply impulse. And this will make the character jump in the air. So we type x, y, 0, minus 400. Copy that. Save it. So in the create event, we want to type in, we need to make two new variables. So we need to type in jumping equals 0 and touching equals 0. Right sweet, so then what we do is we type in in the step event, go down to the bottom and type in if place meeting x y plus one and then type object underscore floor and then type in touching equals one jumping equals zero and then put an else so if that's not the case then this is what will happen so we copy that paste that it will so it won't be touching and we will be jumping so basically if we're not touching the floor we've got to be jumping so we're not going to be touching the ground so we've got that now we want to set up some animation for this so just a simple if jumping equals one type in sprite index equals hero hero jump and then what you want to do is copy that and type in and and jumping equals zero so now if we press w in game we should jump Yeah, and if we click on the uh, virtual key, we should jump as well. And that is pretty much it, really. So what we'll do is, um, you press left, you can jump. Yeah, perfect. And it should work perfectly on your Android as well. So what we want to do is just get rid of this horrible box. So if we just go back into create on the virtual and just comment this line slash slash and then you should not be able to see it but you'll, it should still work so let's try it there we go and in game all your people will see is the jump the people who are your players they won't even know it's a virtual key so let's move on to adding some health and stuff like that all right there we go so that's jumping so what we need to add now is some on-screen effects so Let's go back into our dude, type in create. Uh, we've already got player health, so let's just, for the sake of it, change this to into a global variable, just to make it easier. You don't really need to, it doesn't really need to be a global variable, that could just be player health, but if we're gonna add some outside elements that can affect his health, then, you know, it always helps. So, what we need to create now is just insert a sprite make this like 300 by f I don't know 50 now your health bar can be anything you want you could have hearts, three hearts you could have 
an actual bar that decreases with his health it's entirely up to yourself but for the sake of this just to show you I'm going to make three versions of the health blobs so it's basically going to be like just imagine that's a heart or a tomato right there we go so you got three three hearts so we save that and call that sprit underscore full health for the sake of this game it's just going to be your health goes down in segments of like 10 or something like that so and then duplicate it and call it sprit it's got half health click edit sprite and then just rub out the um, the last one that tomato and then did I just write half like a right knobhead that was supposed to be half health and then duplicate that and call it spray underscore one health and basically just rub out the middle one and then obviously no health can just be deleting the object so create a new object and call this object underscore hero health it's actually a good thing that we set it as a, a global variable now so press ok and then just put them up there like that that is shit isn't it <laughs> that is the worst drawing ever right and then just go in now if we go in and you'll see it it's just basically like three blobs up here now we want to make it so that if he touches an object that's um, like a disaster object like an environmental hazard we want his health to go down so let's do that so first of all let's create the environmental object now fortunately part of this pack I get spikes and um, where was it so you get all different things so you can create like a simple trap you know like a spike sticking out the ground like yeah see this is the the one I'm going to choose spikes large and just go spirit underscore spike trap center that and then create a new object assign that spike trap call it object underscore spike trap Now we want this object to have physics, but we want it not to move, so just set the density and the friction to zero. Collision shape, we could bring that down a bit. Like that, that'll do. Then press OK. Because we want the player to hit it, so if the player touches it, he gets damaged. So we want to go back to the hero, go to create, just to make life easier put hero health at 30 and then in he, in the hero health object we want to set a new step event and then just put if global dot player health equals 30 sprite index equals sprite underscore full health and then copy that and then just change this to else else if equals 20 it'll drop down to what did I put that half health I should have changed that really but yeah so half health and then change that copy that and paste it into import 10 equals 1 health And that will basically just mean that as we lose health, the animation will change. Well, the sprite will change. So we want to put the object spike trap, just put it there like that. Right, so what we want to do is we want to make it so that the spike trap 
has a cooldown, so this is like a cooldown that the player won't know about. But it's really annoying if you walk into a spike trap and you just die, basically like your health just goes doot 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 and you lose all your health. So what we want to do is put a variable in your spike trap, call it just hit equals zero. And then press OK. And then basically within this spike trap collides with the player. Then what will happen is it'll set off, it'll say just just hit equals one, alarm zero equals ten. So it'll basically say I've just been hit, I can't be hit again. And in ten seconds I can be hit again. And then what we do is we set an alarm. Alarm zero will say just hit equals zero. And it's basically dangerous again. So okay that, save that. And then object hero, when he collides with the spike trap, if other dot just hit equals zero, basically just means if the other object I'm colliding with, its variable just hit equals zero, then it'll do something. So global dot player health minus equals ten. Right, so let's just try that and see what happens. Right, so as you can see, I've hit it, my health's gone down. So let, now we should be able to hit that again, bam. As you can see, my health didn't go down because it hasn't reset. Oh yeah, because we have, basically we're at the lowest health now and the sprite hasn't been set to disappear so what we do is if we click on the object hero health step event if global dot player health equal than or less than zero sorry it's less than or equal than zero and then put uh, game underscore restart so now it should kill us right let's try it so bam now the cooldown on that time is a little bit quick so change that to about 20 and actually put if just hit equals zero right and then just so it's in a nice order right and then play that now this should work touch wood bam oh still got a bit of a cooldown but yeah if we hit it again there we go game restarted we got full health Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for the, um, you know, jumping and on-screen display. In the next video, I'm going to put in stuff like picking items up, some enemies in, so that you can jump over them and things like that. But we'll have to test that out on Android, so I'll have to switch to my webcam to show you. Uh, but yeah, I'll do that in the next video. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll speak to you later. Bye.